afternoon. Uh, first, firstly, I would like to thank uh, to the audience for for being here, um, for being interested in in this topic, analytical performance specification, and also I would like to to thank BioRat for inviting me to give that session. So uh, during my presentation, I am going to talk about analytical performance specification, and then I, I try to go deeper on the biological variation model. After 15 years after the um, Stockholm consensus, um, took place the Milan Congress, as you know, and from the five models, uh, we passed to three, three models. The first one, based on the effect of analytical, sorry, on, based on the, um, on the clinical outcomes. The second model, based on biological variation. And the third one, based on the state of the art. So, the first, models, the, firm, the first model addresses the effect of the analytical error over the clinical outcomes. So, probably, this should be the preferred model. But this model have this, uh, have some disadvantages. One of the one one of these is th that this model uh, is uh, could be only applied just for one magnitude in a in one certain situation. I mean, for example, uh, the glucose could be applied for diabetes diagnosis, and we can set analytical performance specification for glu glucose derived from a, a study that that evaluate the, uh, over the, the effect over this outcome. But we cannot use this analytical performance specification for other uh, uses uh, for glucose. Okay, the second model, I, I, will, I, I will go deeper in, in that model later, but um, um, basically this model um, is based on the concept that the analytical error should be lower than the um, physiological fluctuations that a magnitude experiments within an individual for a, for a given magnitude. And one of the important advantages of that model is that can be applied for more than 350 magnitudes that I already have some studies related with biological variation. And the last model, uh, the, the previous two models, are superior to this uh, third model, which is the state of the art. And is, this model is, is, is limited by the current, the, by the performance of the current technology. So this is, this is a clearly disadvantages because we are not focused on the patient. We are, focu we are um, in, in, in some way, we are limited for, uh, for, uh, for our technology. After the Milan consensus, as you know, um, uh, five groups, five task force were created. Uh, different task force for, uh, for example, some of them were created for assure um, the, the um, establishment of analytical performance specification all over the, um, the analytical process, from pre to post uh, phase, uh, analytical phases. Uh, and, and another task force uh, was created to elaborate a new uh, biological variation database where, where I personally uh, uh, have participated. And uh, um, other model, this one, uh, was uh, created to allocate the different measurements to, to the analytical performance specification. But, okay, I can explain that better. Um, this task group published a paper with this algorithm, algorithm which uh, help us to understand and, and to understand and help us to allocate different different measurements to an analytical performance specification. And uh, it is it, it 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 begins with with a question. And the question is: uh, Are these uh, magnitudes uh, are these measurements? Or has this measurement, uh, uh, this measurement has a central role in a specific disease. So it's the same that, that the example that I have uh, put uh, before. 
For example, the glucose in the diabetes diagnose. In this case, yes, it is. So then we have to check if there is available any outcome, any, any study based, based on clinical outcomes. If it is, we can set this study. If not, we can check if biological variation studies are av available while the scientific community develops some study based on clinical outcomes. Okay, then for example, if we have, um, for most of the man magnitude in the laboratory, this, this option is not going to be useful because they are, they are used for certain diagnose, but they are, they, they are also used uh, for a lot of clinical settings. So in this case, uh, the glucose, it, it will be not the best example because we are going to use glu glucose for diagnose uh, hypoglycemia or other diseases, other pathology or other situations. Okay. If, if we don't have uh, biological variation studies available, we have to go down, okay, until the, 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 the lower model, which is state of the art. For some magnitude, we are not going to have biological variation study. As I have said, uh, we, uh, we have around 350 magnitudes includes, include in the, the database. So in this, in this table, you can see some examples that the group published Okay, with, with the different models and different magnitudes assigned to these models. But let's talk about biological variation. As most of the audience know, the first database was created in 1997. Dr. Arricos is her mother. Okay. And with the help of the Entire Analytical Quality Commission from the Spanish Society of Laboratory Medicine, you can see the members in the picture, was created. And this database was updated every two years. The last, the last, update, the last update was in 2014. This database was diffused internationally thanks to, to the fact of being in the WestGAR website and was used all over the world. We can see in the table, the, from left to the right, the matrix, the number of the measurement. Then we can see the number of paper includes by each magnitude. I'm sure that you know that table, but I'm going to explain it. Um, the, the, the estimates, the within and between subject by logical variation, and then, the, the, in this case, the desirable uh, specification derived from, from those estimates. This database is available uh, in the QCNet, which is the BioRAD website, and also in the software for internal quality control, Unity Real-Time. So here, we could set an ethical performance specification based on biological variation, total error, imprecision, and even we can introduce manually the state of the art from our AQA, for example, or, or any, any specification that we consider. Okay, so as I have said, biological variation could have application uh, for interpreting, interpreting internal quality control results, for example, but have a lot of more application, like the reference change value, uh, method verification or validation, and all of those applications have a direct impact over the patient results. So because of that, we need robust estimates. And what are the limitations uh, of the 2014 database? But basically, um, the problem uh, could, um, not, not the problem, but the limitation uh, could be that um, there, there were some studies included with obsolete methodology. Furthermore, the, um, the median value selected to sum all the studies uh, uh, was the, the median, instead of a meta-analysis that could classify the study um, by his quality. And we didn't have confidence interval, so we didn't know about the uh, statistical power, about the strength of our, of our estimation. Because of that, after, um, after the 
the Milan Consensus, the Task Force Group on Biological Variation Database, which whose members are those of we, we used to we used to meet here in Barcelona. Uh, started the development of a new database. For this, we elaborated a checklist. Okay, the checklist is based evaluate different points. Okay, of a biological variation study from A to D. A it will be the best quality and the, the lower, the worst study. Okay, first, uh, in the first revision that we, that we made, we, we did four, four groups, okay? Uh, and here in the table, you can see the, the groups, uh, the, the magnitudes within each group for lipids, enzymes, diabetes, and kidney-related magnitudes. But let's see uh, what, what were the main items not ful fulfilled. So the main items, items not fulfilled were directly related with the statistical management, as you can see in the, in the table, okay? And it is, this, these points could be crucial to obtain um, robust results, okay? So we have to go caref carefully if we have to design a biological variation study, we have to go carefully over those points. I mean, the layer analysis, the way on, the way, the way on how we estimate the analytical imprecision. We have to check the homoelasticity, homoelasticity, the normality, all the so all the tests that our model need to to assure robust results, including the the study state of the participants. And this is how we, uh, this is the process, okay? This is the, the sum of the process uh, on, how, uh, um, on how we are, we are performing the, 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 the updating process, okay? So we, first of all, perform a bi bibliography search, which, which is standardized for all the group, including the MES term, biological variation. By the way, this, this MES term is, is already available in PubMed, so if you want to, to check it, you, you can do it, and uh, including the papers of the database, we perform or we evaluate all of these papers from A to D. Then we perform a data collection. We enter the data in the database. Okay, everything in the paper that could be useful uh, for for uh, for for um, well, if we have to select some paper, for example, we need information about the population, the sex, uh, or the, the health status, etc. And then we apply, after applying an inclusion criteria related with the age, with the sampling time interval, etc., we perform a meta-analysis, obtaining a new estimate. Okay, here we can see the intra-individual variation for the total cholesterol. This, this paper is uh, recently, really re last week, or last week uh, was accepted, it's going to be published in CCA, and here we can say the within individual variation for cholesterol, okay, we have segregated, or we have divided by uh, different groups reg um, related to um, quality, but also for AIDS, um, pediatric, po pediatric pop population, elderly, just to uh, take a view, uh, the, uh, just to take a view on the, on the behavior of the different groups, okay? For example, here, we have the within day biologic aberration, which is expected to be lower than the rest. Okay, here we can see another publication. Uh, the first uh, paper that was published with results from magnitudes, which, which is related with uh, diabetes magnitudes. And here we can see the results from the meta-analysis and on the right, results from the, from the recourse database. Here we can see Okay, that the estimates are really similar. Okay, here we, we can see the data that is going to, to be published, okay, of lipid measurements, and we can see exactly the same for these measurements. For, for this measurement, we, we, can, uh, we can see a slight, a slightly uh, some difference, but uh, not important difference, okay? For, uh, in, in, in the case of other magnitudes, maybe 
because of the obsolete methodology included in the in the recourse database could be higher or bigger difference, but this is not the case. Uh, last, I, I, I am going to introduce uh, the, the, the database, but just, just a little, because this database is going to be launched on Thursday, okay? The, in this database, uh, for the moment, we have reviewed more than uh, 100 magnitudes, including more than 450 papers reviewed, and with more than 1,500, less in this case, records. In this database, we will be able to search by measurement, okay, or by reference, or with a key, with a um, keyword uh, searcher, anything that we want in the database. Okay, here we have an example on how we are going to present the, the different measurement, and then we can we, we will be able to go deeper in, in those measurements, okay, with a lot of information regarding the, um, the paper reviewed. Okay, we have the estimates, we have the number of subjects included, and we have here the score, okay, of the paper. And I, um, as I have said, this, this database will, will be launched by Dr. Osne Asar, who has worked a lot in this project, okay, and will be chaired by Dr. Professor Esber Samber and Dr. Pilar, Pilar Fernandez Calle on Thursday. So I invite you to go there and avoid, try, try to not miss it because it's going to be really interesting, this symposium. And just to, just to thank to all the members of the working group, working group, uh, group sorry, Analytical Quality Commission and the task force for making that possible. Uh, including some of them, so, so, some of them that are not in this photo, like Berna, which is today with us. Uh, that's it. Thank you.